Hey guys, Lightbolt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the brand new 2018 comedy Overboard starring Anna Faris and I can't say his name, Eugenio something, that also Mexican actor. He's been in a bunch of new Hollywood blockbuster films recently. I can't remember his name, I apologize. So, <laughs> Overboard is the gender bend version of the 1980s movie Overboard starring, star, starring starring Goldie Hawn and uh, Kurt Russell. Awesome film, classic 80s film, still kind of disturbing in the kidnapping aspect. Obviously I'm not running plot points because it's been out so, for longer than I've been alive. So like, you should have watched it by now. But like when they announced this movie, I was like, why, why, why? Why do they keep redoing movies? Why can't there just be new movies, right? I had an issue, I had a massive issue with the new Ghostbusters movie because it wasn't a sequel, but it was kind of a sequel, but it really wasn't a sequel. They only made it to have all female leads to draw in the crowds for the whole empowering women movement that's going on, which is great. But like, there's a way to do an all women film and like, you don't have to get rid of all male films to make all women films. You can make brand new all women films. Like, for instance, right? What if Hollywood decided to make a all male version of Charlie's Angels? People would be rioting in the street. Excuse me. Certain feminists would be rioting in the streets. How dare they get rid of female icons? What if they decided to make Wonder Woman a man? Wonder Man. Riots in the streets, right? That's the hypocrisy of it. You, you don't have to erase these awesome male movies to put female characters in their place. Just make brand new awesome female movies. There's a new movie with uh, uh, Mila Kunis and uh, Kate McKenna about them running around Europe with spies or whatever, right? That looks awesome. Like, uh, Ocean Ocean's 8 is coming out. I don't actually know if it is a complete redo with an all-female cast or if it's like another installment in the Oceans series with a female cast. I'm still a little curious on that. But uh, so my point is when they announced that Overboard was going to be starring Anna Faris and she was the one taking in the male amnesia man person, um, I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. So then I saw trailers and I was like, all right, you know, it's Anna Faris. I, I love Anna Faris. Stemming from the 90s classic film Scream. No, I'm kidding. It's not Scream. It's called Scary Movie. It's a spoof on Scream. Um, then she did a bunch of other scary movies, literally called Scary Movies. Um, then there are a bunch of, bunch of films. 2008's House Bunny is what, like, stapled her as a leading woman. And she was in uh, <laughs> 2011's What's Your Number? Opposite her now ex-husband Chris Pratt, but also Chris Evans was the love interest in that, and then Aziz Ansari was in that as a voice. But uh, a bunch of other people were in it. It was such. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. It's another movie I got to talk about. 20, 2011's What's Your Number? Just watching Chris Evans in tidy whities on a on a couch playing guitar, or it wasn't tidy whities. It was boxes. Just. Beautiful. It's a beautiful image. Everyone should look at that. Our Captain America for us. Our Nomad for us. <laughs> um, okay, so I was supposed to watch this movie on Sunday, but then um, my bro Eddie happened to stay over for a solid 25 and a half hours, so it kind of ruined the movie pans. Curse you, Eddie. But it worked out in our benefit, obviously, because we haven't hung out in a long time, so it was like, it was necessary. And then I was going to watch it uh, Monday after work, and... I was telling my parents about it because they wanted to see it on Saturday before Mother's Day because they'll be in the city because we're going to the city on Mother's Day. Fun facts. Just showing all my scheduling for the week. So my mom was like, oh, why don't we just go see it after you get out of work? And I'm like, you know what? That's a great idea. So I have my movie pass. They might have had coupons. I don't remember. So we go to the theater. And before we go in, it's like 7, 7 o'clock. It's a 7 to 5 showing. And I'm like, I'm going to try the claw machine. So I put a dollar in the machine for this little tiny claw machine with all these emoji things and I pick this alien thing up and I'm like did I just win on the first try and then it drops and I'm like son of a douche and I was like fine I get one more try so then it goes down again on the alien but it grabs this crying or uh hearty eye cat pillow thing as well as the alien and they both came up 
and I dropped and I got two prizes with one claw grab and I sent it to oh, many peers and I was so proud of myself and it was all the hashtag the little things and I'm truly living my best life if I got so elated by getting two prizes from one try, right? It's like winning the lottery. Maybe I should have played lottery today. Anyway, so we go in and we're watching it and I'm like, all right, you know, it's it's a solid eight. It's a solid eight so far. It's an hour and 50 minute movie. 10 minutes could have been shaved if I'm really nitpicking, if I'm really nitpicking. But the longer it went on, the more I realized how much of its own movie it was. For instance, back in 2009, uh, 17 again came out, with starring Zac Efron. Um, was it 2009? 2010? I gotta check that out. And everyone kept pitching it as the modern version of Big. Big's was Tom Hanks' 1980s classic film, you know. The man becomes the kid who becomes the man again, and 17 again was the man becomes the kid who becomes the man again. So that's how I visioned this overboard. It was comparative to Big and 17 again versus 1980s overboard to 2018's overboard, right? That's how I saw it. And then when I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, it is its own thing. It's not a specific remake. It's its own beautiful movie and it makes sense. There was drama, there was action, there was adventure, there was romance, there was such an inclusivity amount of of, of music. There was show tunes, there was rock, there was hip hop, there was, there was so much Latin music throughout the entire thing. And, and whew, let me tell you, when, when that, when that Latin dude sings, it's just, you gotta take your deep breaths. It's very, you need a cigarette afterwards. It's magic. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it reminded me a lot of the Fast and Furious films because the Fast and Furious films have, this, have the same kind of soundtrack. It has ve all different types of genres, but when the Hispanic music plays and you just see everyone having a great time and laughing and singing and dancing and just feeling the music and enjoying the moment, that's the awesome part about humanity, that you see people naturally being elated. And it, it's this magical feeling and you're like, you know what, that's what this is about. Smiling and having a good time. Have we learned nothing from Carly Rae Jepsen, right? It's always a good time. I liked the little twists. I liked the realization after the amnesia came about. I liked the confessions. I liked the 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 whole play on it. The, 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 the you know, you don't need money to be happy and, but you know, you, you do your best and you'll get a family and be happy because of what you have. But then at the end, you know, obviously the money comes into play as well, but like, everyone wins at the end. And it's nice to see it not being such a predictable movie that, you know, the girl gets the guy at the end, right? The, the girl and the guy get the family and the money and everything. And everyone's happy and nursing school. And, and it's just, everyone got what they wanted. And it was so cool seeing that because it's like, it gives you hope, man, right? Like, everyone wants to be happy. Everyone's allowed to be happy. Everyone's allowed to question what where they fit in in the world to be happy and, and and this movie was really well done it was like a telenovela on steroids and hilarious and i loved it so so much it was really important i don't understand how it has a 30 something percent on rotten tomatoes it makes no sense granted i also don't understand how i feel pretty the amy schumer movie that we talked about recently has a 30 something percent on rotten tomatoes makes no sense as you've noticed, as I talk about film, I am a strong proprietor and observer on subtext. Subtext is where it's at. That's kind of where I have been reviewing everything on a subtext level. This film had subtext. This. Frankie Heck does this. The zhuzh, right, in the middle. And Axel's like, what is this? And then there was a whole episode that dedicated to zhuzh. And, but Axel got the zhuzh, man. Like, he got it. And that's what this movie was. I got the zhuzh. I, I was Axel in this moment. I got the zhuzh. It was fun. It was a really fun movie. Like, I'm obsessed with two of the songs now. And I don't speak much Spanish. I, I can talk to some workers here and there, but not not excessively. I, can, I'm, I might be able to hold a three-sentence conversation with you at that. Yeah. 
that's it. Anyway, 2018's Overboard, 10 out of 10 bolts. Give it a watch. Mucho mahalo, guys.